we want to complete the first chapter, which is study unit one, okay? So at first we are going to, so this module is known as South African Economic Indicators. So at first we want to define what are these economic indicators at first? Yes, specifically, we are taking into account these economic indicators within the context of South Africa. But what are these economic indicators at first? So an economic indicator is simply a statistic or a data that shows the behavior of an economic variable. Okay. That's what an economic indicator is all about. It is simply a data, which could be GDP. GDP, these are statistics, which could be the levels of employment, which could be exchange rates, okay? So an economic indicator is simply a statistic that we can use to show the behavior of an economic variable, okay? That is simply known as an economic indicator, okay? So what are these economic indicators? These economic indicators to show the behavior of how South Africa as a whole is behaving. When you see the news, uh, when it is written or being said that South Africa over the past decade, you have been performing well or you have been performing dismally, what are the factors that they have taken into account? They have taken into account real GDP. They have taken into account employment rates. They have taken into account exchange rates. They have taken into account the level of money supply. They have taken into account the balance of payment. They have also taken into account the CPI, which is a major a, a measure of inflation. They have also taken into account the PPI. So these are simply the examples of the economic uh, statistics that we are taking a look at. Okay. So what are the reasons for monitoring these economic indicators? Why do we monitor GDP? What is the reason for statistics South Africa monitoring the levels of employment. Why, what is the main criteria for the South African Reserve Bank measuring and monitoring the level of money supply? Okay, so the reasons for monitoring these economic indicators is so that we can assess general of an economy. At the end of the day, we need to know how South Africa is performing either relative to other African nation or either by itself. How is it performing? How is it performed? Okay, we need to assess performance of an economy. So for us to say that no, South Africa over the past decade, it has done well relative to most African countries. What do we need to take into account? Let's take into account real GDP, it could be per capita. Let's take into account inflation rates. Hello? Okay. Sorry, sir. Mm -hmm. Did you say anything? No. Okay. So the other reason for monitoring indicators so that at the end of the day, we can analyze to see how effective was the economic policy that was put or that was placed into account, okay? If there was an economic policy that was put in place, maybe this was a expansionary fiscal policy, maybe after a pandemic, after the COVID-19 pandemic, the South African government did sit down and say, no, let's increase money supply. Let's spend within the economy. At the end of the day, we need to see how effective was that policy, okay? After the COVID-19 pandemic, the South African government did sit down, 
they reduced the repo rate. They tried as much as possible to reduce the levels of interest rate. At the end of the day, we need to analyze was that effective, okay? So that we can also make economic focus so that we can compare economic policies, yes, uh, between countries, we can compare economic policies between South Africa and Lesotho or South Africa and Botswana. Uh, speculators does also monitor these economic indicators so that they make decisions. Should we buy or should we sell? Speculators, these are simply individuals that uh, tries as much as possible uh, to attain a profit out of changing circumstances. They also monitor interest rates. They also monitor the levels of inflation so that they can see at some point in time, should we buy stocks and sell them at some point in time and then we make a profit, okay? Is it making sense? Is it making sense, Katie? Uh, is it making sense? Uh, I forgot your name now. Yes, sir. It's making yeah. sense. Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah. So the other reason is so that we can make a decision. Should we expand our business? Yes, if the economy is performing well, if we see that real GDP is growing, South Africa is growing over a period of time, the levels of income are increasing, jobs are all over the country. Why should we not expand our business? Why should we not explore into new markets? But for you to make that decision, you need best to take a look on these uh, statistics, okay? Yes. Okay, so let's take a look on the main criteria for assessing the performance of the economy. Already we know that a there are four main government objectives. The first objective is for economic growth. Government each and every year. The government each and every year, it tries as much as possible for the economy to grow, for price stability, for full employment, for balance of payment stability, equitable distribution of income. So these are amongst the five main basic uh, objectives of the government. Okay, so these objectives, we can also use this objective to measure or to assess the performance of an economy. Economic growth is simply the total value of all goods and services that have been produced over a period of year within the boundaries of a country. That is what is simply a, in which we are referring to. So we measure economic growth. The main measure for economic growth is simply real GDP. Real GDP, we, you have to note that we have a difference. Uh, there's a difference between a real GDP and nominal GDP. Real GDP is the common measure and it is the effective measure that we can use to measure economic growth. So economic growth is one of a yardstick that we can use uh, to measure the performance of an economy. Yes, if South Africa is growing over time, we can we measure that, yes, through real GDP. And we can assume that no, over time, South Africa has been performing well. We also need to take into account uh, the changes in the general price level. The changes in the general price level is the one we are referring to yeah. as price stability. Né? So price stability is whereby we are saying that over time, 
how he has been inflation behaving. Have we been in an inflationary environment? Have we been maybe in a deflationary environment? How do we assess that we use the consumer price index? The consumer price index simply takes into account a representative basket of consumer goods. This could include salt, this could include uh, cooking oil, it could include millimeter, whereby it simply represents a consumer good. So we want to analyze how has been the prices of these products changing over time. And that is composed through the CPI, the consumer price index, okay? Uh, of course, it is every nation's objective to try as much as possible to increase the levels of employment, okay? One of the objectives of a government is of full employment. Let's make jobs available, okay? Let's make jobs available. So if employment rate or unemployment rate is around 70%, we can see that overall, this economy is struggling to what? To maintain jobs or to come up with a new, new jobs, okay? Uh, the other uh, factor that we take into account when assessing the performance of an economy is the balance of payment. The balance of payment is simply a statement that records all economic transactions that take place between South Africa and its trading partners. Within the BOP, we try as much as possible to maintain stability, okay? To maintain stability, we want to try as much as possible so that the value of exports might be equal to the value of imports, okay? Equitable distribution of income and wealth is also another factor we need to take into account when assessing the performance of an economy. By equitable distribution of income, we are simply saying within a single economy, within a single society, or within a single community, how is income distributed? Are we having the poorest men in one community and also the richest men in that same community? Okay. So we try as much as possible to reduce the gaps between the rich and the poor. Okay. We try as much as possible. So that is one, one of a factor uh, we need to take into account. Okay. Is it making sense? Yes. Uh, regarding the price stability, um, uh, when you say price stability, let's say uh, prices of goods increase every year. Mm -hmm. uh, would you say that, as a like, would you say that the price are not stable? I don't understand that part. Yeah. Oh, well, fine. Uh, price stability. Yeah. Okay. Okay, by price stability, uh, what we simply mean, uh, Ted, is that the general price levels, okay, by general, we are simply taking into account uh, prices that maybe represents uh, all products. Né? We are not taking into account everything per se, but we are simply saying the general price level, it could be fewer, Okay, it could be fuel, it could be the price of basic goods, okay? So mostly when we take into account uh, price stability, we are saying the prices of these basic goods must not be very volatile, okay? They must not change each and every time you go to pick and pay yesterday a 10 kg of millimeter was, I'm not sure what's the price, I think 100, is it 100 trend if I'm not sure? Yeah, I think 100 trend. Yesterday it was 100 trend, today, today is 112 friend. the day uh, tomorrow is 121 rand, the day after tomorrow is 136 rand, next week it's 190 rand. That 
represents prices that are unstable, okay? So at some point in time, we can say, yes, the price of millimu was 90 rand last year. It's now 100 rand. Yes, the prices have increased, but we can also say that it is stable because it has not changed very much over that period of time, okay? Okay, right. you thank you. You understand, eh? Yeah, yes, I do, thanks. Okay, so uh, what are the sources of, where do we get the rates of employment? Where do we get the rates of inflation to say that employment rate is 67% uh, or unemployment is at this rate? Where do we get that data? We get it from Statistics SA. We get it from the South African Reserve Bank. We can get the data from newspapers and financial magazines. We can get it from the World Bank online portal. We can get it from a quantic data, or we can also get it from the International Monetary Fund, okay? Okay, these are just the characteristics. Don't worry about them. Okay, so let's take a look on some basic concepts and techniques. Uh, earlier, we did take into account that we have what is known as a real GDP. We also have what is known as a nominal GDP. Okay, we have nominal values, we have real values. How do we calculate a nominal value? When we are calculating a nominal value, we simply take into account current price. So I'll represent current price by PC multiplied by current quantity. I'll represent current quantity by PC. So my C is simply representing something which is current, okay? So this one is known as a nominal fact or a nominal value, okay? How about calculating a real value? When calculating a real value, we take into account the price that is constant. We take into account a constant price, so I represent a constant price by PK multiplied by current quantity, okay? And this represents a real value, okay? By PK, we are simply take, taking into account that whenever we calculate a real value, it could be real GDP. If you are calculating real GDP of 2021, we take into account what we have produced, the amount of goods and services that have been produced in 2021, which is our current year. We do not multiply by the prices in 2021 we then multiply by the price of a base year. So my K year, my constant year, represents a price of a base year, okay? Whenever we calculate real values, we take into account base years. But when we are calculating a nominal value, that uh, we do not take that into account, okay? Okay, volume, price, and value. A value, of course, for us to calculate the value of something, we simply take into account the price and then we multiply it by quantity, okay? If it could be value of, a, of anything that you might think of. It could be the value of all the computers that you have in your house. We simply take into account how many computers are there? Three. Prices of each computer, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, okay? We have calculated the value of all the computers that we have, okay? If we need to calculate volume, we simply take into account the PC, the PQ, this PQ is P multiplied by Q, okay? P multiplied by Q 
if you divide both sides by P, this is supposed to be P, not Q. There's a mistake here. This is supposed to be P. If you divide both sides by P, it means P will cancel out on one side and then you are left with quantity. So this is just calculating quantity, okay? Mostly quantity you are given, okay? The value, mostly you are also given, but the value is simply the price times quantity. And then the quantity you will be given. But if you are not given the quantity, you simply say PQ divided by P so that the P's cancel out and you are left with Q on one side. So this is a simple mess. No? Okay. No. Can you please repeat the, the value and volume? Okay. We said value. We said the value is equal to P multiplied by multiplied by Q, right? Yes. Volume or quantity or simply quantity. So if we say value is equal to P times Q, how do we then calculate or how, what is the way forward so that we are only left with Q here, okay? What we simply do is that this PQ we divide PQ by P, okay? We say value. Okay. We say volume. Volume is equal to value, right? Value, which is PQ, right? Or should I simply write P times Q? P times, yes. Let me write Q times Q, volume is simply equal to P times Q divided by P, okay? What happens okay. is this must cancel out, okay? Because, All right. so it means at the end of the day, volume is equal to Q. Okay. And then you are done. Like what I've said, right. most, okay. mostly you are given this Q, okay? Mostly you are given this Q and maybe you just need to calculate the, the value. You simply say Q multiplied by the price. You'll be also given the price, okay? So to calculate volume, you simply say value divided by P. P and P will cancel out and then you are left with a Q, okay? So how do we calculate a percentage change? This is, this meant us. Okay, thank you. Yes? Do you want to say something? Okay. How do we calculate the percentage change? This is very crucial. This is very crucial. You see it whenever you do your exam, you can see a calculation of percentage changes more than seven questions, okay? And it is very crucial. So the general method of calculating a percentage change is equal to new minus old divided by old, multiplied by 100, okay? This is similar as if I've said, uh, Q2, let's say it's quantity, Q2 minus Q1 divided by Q1, multiplied by 100, okay. From this example that we are given here of saying there's an increase, let's say it is, an, it is a price increase, okay. Let's say it is a price increase from 20 rand to 25 rand. What is our new year, Katie? What is our new price? 
Our new price is 25 rand. 25? What is our old price? It's 20. Divided by our old price? 20. Multiplied by 100. Then you get your percentage, which is similar. New, 25. Old, 20. Divided by old, 20. Multiplied by 100. Okay. And then you get your percentage. So this is a very crucial. This is very crucial. You will see many questions uh, that examines you on this. It could be a percentage change in prices. It could be a percentage change in GDP. It could be any percentage change. Maybe it's interest rates. Okay. You simply have to know that you first check interest rates you have rose from 15 to 25. So you simply say 25 minus 15 divided by 15 multiplied by 100. Okay. So you are multiplying by 100 so that it can be a percentage. Okay. So it's simple. Yes. Basis point. What is a basis point? A basis point is 100 of a percentage point. Okay. A basis point is 100th of a percentage point. This means that when we have one percentage point, we have how many basis points? Hello? When we have one percentage point, it means we have 100, 100 basis points. And if we have one basis point, we have how many percentages? This is crucial. If we have one basis point, one basis point, if we have one basis point, how many percentage points do we have? Don't we have 100? No. No. How can we have 100? We have 0 0.01. Okay. To have one basis so, point here, what did we do? We simply divided both sides by 100. 100, yeah. Yes, we simply divided both sides by 100 so that we are left with one on this side. If you divide one by 100, it's what? Yes? Point one, 0 0.1, right? Exactly, exactly. So 100 by 100 will cancel out, then you are left with one. One divided by 100, it becomes 0 0.01. So one basis point is equal to 0 0.01 percentage points, OK? This is very crucial. Levels and rates of change. So there is a difference between a high level and a high rate of change, okay? There's a difference between maybe a high price and a high rate of change in price, okay? A high price could be something that is costing 700,000. 700,000 is a high price, right? 700,000 rent. But if it changes from 700,000 rent, maybe to 700, and 700,000, 37 cents. Can we say that the rate of change is very high? No. No, it's not that high. It's not that high. 
But if it changes from 700,000, maybe to 3 million, 500, the rate of change is now very high. So a high price does not mean a high rate of change. The change could be very insignificant. If you calculate the change here from 700,000 to 700,037 cents, the rate of change could be far, far less than uh, 0.5%, even less than 0.25%. Zero point zero two five. Okay. So stocks and flows. Stocks. We have a stock variable. So a stock variable is measured at a certain point in time at a certain point in time, okay? It is a fixed amount. It is a fixed amount at a certain or at a particular point in time. Whenever we say that, okay, this wealth on this day is equal to 500,000 rand. 500,000 rent is fixed on a particular day, on the 5th of April, 2021, Cadiz wealth is 500,000. It becomes a stock variable. We have flow variables. Okay, so uh, I'm seeing here, I need to, to change my, I need to change my, uh, okay, it's fine. It's fine, I think we can continue. Okay, so simply rejoin it. When it goes off, uh, simply rejoin after after a minute. Okay, I'm seeing I can, yeah, simply rejoin. KD and, actually, I forgot, I forgot the other one, the name of the other student. Okay, so simply. Tabby. Tabby, exactly, Tabby. Simply rejoin using the same link, ne? All right. Okay, because I'm seeing, uh, I'm seeing I'm left with one minute. 